Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland, I'm in Milan and uh, behind me is a statue of Giuseppe Garibaldi. So um, one of my uh, students was asking about him so I thought I'd make this brief video about Garibaldi and where better than um, with this uh, question statue of him behind. Of course better if I made it at his tomb in Caprese but I don't think I'm going to go there. Um, so anyway, he was born in Nice in 1807. I know that's parts of France. Nizza, as the Italians call it. Um, it was actually French territory when he was born in 1807. It had just been past the French two years earlier. Part of the Napoleonic Wars eventually came back to um, one of the Italian states. Um, uh, uh, Piedmont, Sardinia. Um, his parents were, were Ligurian. Um, so it changed hands quite a bit. As in that part of the world, it's quite ambiguous who's Italian, who's French. And there's some people that are speaking the Niçois dialect to this day. Um, anyway, so uh, he was uh, from a well, fairly well-off working class family. And he got who could read and write. And a lot of people couldn't read and write in those days. Um, so uh, he became a sailor. And he sailed to Russia and places like that. So the Napoleonic Wars were over. Um, and Napoleon had briefly united northern Italy. And one of Napoleon's titles has been the King of Italy. But he was only interested in the North, or to some extent the Papal States. He wasn't trying to extirpate the Papal States, but have the Pope under his thumb, just tune the pulpit to propagandize for him. And had even taken the Pope prisoner, despite being a Catholic. That was um, Pius VI, then only Pius VII. But sometimes got along well with the Pope, got him to attend his coronation. The Napoleon uh, found himself. So back to him. I Carbonari were around and uh, there were some mournful young men who wore black uh, because uh, they felt bereaved by the failure of the previous revolution, like Mazzini was one of those. So uh, he, he met some Italians when he sailed to Russia, some who were interested in revolutionary ideas as well. Well, perhaps not, not, not curious, but in terms of attracted to. And there were I Carbonari, as in the charcoal burners. Um, I'm not sure what that got to do with being a revolutionary. And he joined the Freemasons, this uh, international fraternal organization, which wasn't explicitly political. You can be of any, any political or religious views to join it, so long as you believe in the Supreme Being, whoever that is. That could be the Hindu pantheon, it could be yourself. They don't never ask you. Um, but because it wants something outside the state, a bit more into the limited state, which is very broadly liberal in those days, it could be in some sense the conservative, it could be revolutionary, but um, totalitarians of all stripes tend to oppose uh, Freemasonry caused the Catholic Church to against it. There were two papal bulls as in Eminenti in from um, 1738 and Quo Gregoria from 1828. The Pope saying you're prohibited from joining. So the, 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 the Freemasons would allow us to join, but the Catholic Church said we must not because they don't like oath buying societies. It exists, it says that it's suggesting that God's other than Jesus Christ could exist and so on. There's a lot of double think by, by um, Catholics saying well, I believe in Catholicism, but I'm going to disregard the Pope's rules. Um, so, yeah, um, he uh, joined that, and he was he's a member of a number of different political organizations. But while it was Young Italy, there are a lot of revolutionary nationalist organizations in different European countries called Young, as in Young Poland, Young Germany, Young Ireland. Um, there was even uh, Young England, but Young England was a Tory ginger group, who <laughs> Disraeli was a member. I mean, England wasn't independent either. They weren't seeking English independence, though. Um, so back to uh, Garibaldi. So there was the 1848 revolution. Well, maybe I'm skipping ahead. I don't want to give a blow-by-blow -blow account of everything he did. He moved to Brazil. He moved to what's now Uruguay. I remember walking down the street in Montevideo years ago and seeing a plaque on the house where he lived. So he married a local lady, had some children with her, and then fought for Uruguayan independence. Um, uh, so the, the ragamuffin war. So uh, he was always spoiling for a fight. He fought in several different uh, wars, um, for allegiance to different states. Anyway, 1848, there was the um, 1848 revolution in many European countries and even in Venezuela. But uh, he um, initially welcomed the election of the new pope, but this new pope didn't turn out to be the reformer. He thought more of a reactionary. Anyway, so the Roman Republic was set up as the pope was driven out. Because remember, the pope ruled Rome and the, and the papal states much of central Italy, had his own army and navy, and it was a serious army. The Roman Republic lasted a bit over a year, and he was like their minister of defense, Garibaldi was, but they eventually fled, and many of the citizens of Rome who cheered the uh, departure of the Pope um, also cheered him back, 
because life on the Repo Roman Republic hadn't been so good. So they, the, the, um, some of these Italian nationalists, they said, well, so we're going to unite Italy. Shall we be able to have a monarch or a monarchy or a republic? Well, Mazzini was a republican by, by conviction. Um, but uh, some people said, well, why don't I have the Pope as the head of state? I mean, the Pope was Italian ever since about 1420. Um, every single Pope had been, no, sorry, ever since about 1520, every single Pope was Italian because the Cardinals elect the Pope. They meet in their conclave, as in con, con clave, con chiave, as in with the key. Um, and uh, because uh, there are only Cardinals get to elect the Pope, so many archbishops in, 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 in Italy, and most of them are made Cardinals, they usually chose one of themselves. That was an obvious choice. What's common to 99% of Italians? That's Catholicism. The language, well, a lot of them didn't speak Italian back then, they spoke various dialects. Standard Italian is based more on Piedmontese than anything else, which is why it's quite close to French. Um, and the Italian identity wasn't that strong. People identified their region, might have called that their nationality. But anyway, um, the Pope declined this. They so won't go into all the stories. He got along well with Mazzini. He didn't like um, Count Camillo di Cavour, the Prime Minister of Sardinia Piedmont. And he didn't like Victor um, Emmanuel, the King of Sardinia Piedmont. But he had to work with them. And so when Italy was united, it wasn't the base that Garibaldi wanted. It wasn't this radical state. It wasn't a complete democratic, not to begin with. And it was a monarchy which he was against. Um, so uh, anyway, he fought many more battles. He and his red shirts, he wore a red shirt. The, the thousand heroes wore red shirts with him as well. He got foreigners to come and fight for his cause. Um, he wanted to take over. Um, he wanted to take over Rome. And obviously, 1861, Italy really was united. The Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed with Turin as its capital, the, the, the capital of, of, of Piedmont initially. Um, and Victor Emmanuel as its king, Verdi, as in uh, Victor, Victor, Vittorio Emanuele, Re d'Italia composer Verdi, his name was like an acronym of that slogan, Victor Emmanuel, King of Italy. Fighting against the Austrians in the north in particular, and various Italians who still thought that their state was more important than the unity of Italy, or, or actually even one part of the Austrian Empire. Um, but eventually had to, had to bow to the inevitable, and Italy became a kingdom, not a republic. And uh, didn't give the right to vote to all men. He didn't seem to believe in the right to vote for women. And incidentally, he was married thrice. His first wife died. Then he married, when he was about 53, he married an 18-year-old, and then immediately after they wed, she had a, a little something to divulge. There was perhaps an impediment to their marriage in that she was carrying the baby of another man, so he immediately left her. He didn't actually divorce her because divorce didn't exist in Italy until the 1970s in, in law, never mind in, in Catholicism, because it didn't exist. Why am I getting such an itchy nose? This thing is kind of annoying me. So anyway, um, I, I, she must have eventually died. I think got that marriage annulled, but then he'd been living with his mistress for years and had three children with her. So he married her, so he was married thrice and he had um, eight children in the end, if I got that right. Um, so uh, 